could do it for a week, but then tell me to do it for two weeks. Tell me to do it for a month. Tell me to do it for six months. Ten years. Also, uh, something I really want to dive into. Like, what was your, what was your daily work routine like at this at this time frame? You've not turned professional yet. Yep. Describe a briefly a, a normal kind of amateur day routine. So I wake up, have breakfast. It could be anything from cereal, toast, and then I jump in my car, and I'd always have 35, 40 minute drive to SNA. And that was where I did all my practice, basically. Um, I'd always get there. I'd start it with two hours putting. Wow. So I'd be doing basically holing out drills, pace drills, working on green reading, things like that. So I'd always do two hours. Generally pop into the clubhouse, have a cup of tea, mm -hmm. and then down to the range. And generally I always did like two hour like stints on each like aspect. So it'd be two hour short game and then two hours on the range. Uh, but between each two hour break, uh, well, sorry, each hour, two hour stim, I'd always have a break, whether it's a cup of tea, a scone or something like that, just to get away Sit from it. Sit in the pro shop for half an hour. Yeah, and, yeah. I've had a couple of chocolate bars <laughs> off the account. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, I was always, yeah, two hours was like always like each skill. And then after that, I'd always finish the day with nine holes. Looking back at that, yep. right now, the knowledge that you've learned and what we've learned about golf development and everything now, yep. was it the right thing to do? And if it wasn't, what would you have changed? I think so, because I developed a, like a, a fairly quick rate. Um, I would put more time into putting more than anything if I could go back because I would say that was the re one of the like my Achilles heel almost during playing season um, always a very good driver of the ball but never did much driving of the ball at SNA because the range is only 225 long oh. so I never really hit driver but it was always a strong part that's interesting yeah so question then a lot of people listening and I understand why would be in the car now or on a run or everything and that's the dream getting up every day but my was it did it get boring or did it get hard i mean it sounds well good in the middle like today day like today we're sat in the uk it's it's sunny it's pretty warm outside i'd we, love to do that we've not played golf for th yeah. three months I, but I couldn't think of anything better getting up on a tuesday in february when it's cold or you know whatever it might be was that did you did it feel like a job was it hard to get out the door sometimes or did you actually love it i loved it really it, it, obviously it's harder when it's when it's cold weather and mm. wet but absolutely loved it just made the most of it because i did a lot of practice with like you know well you know paul howard mm -hmm. don't you went to school with him uh did a lot of practice with him and would always share the journey so we'd have a good crack on the way and then we'd get there and you get you get down to work and then you make it competitive like battling against each other and i'd say that's a good way of improving as well like having someone to try and beat every day like it's uh, a way to develop your skills, definitely. You're right with that, though, Guy. I think, you know, if somebody said to me now, you've got to do it for a week, I could do it for That'd a week. That'd be great. I'd love it. Pyramid of fresh Pro V ones, clubs all clean. Let's stick a podcast on every yeah. two hours and whatever. I think uh, best thing in the world. But you probably didn't have that at the time. Like, did you listen to anything or when you no. practiced? No, I've never ever listened to music because you can't hear the sound of the strike. Yeah. True. But then I could do it for a week, but then tell me to do it for two weeks. Tell me to do it for a month. Tell me to do it for six months. Ten years. I couldn't, ten years. I couldn't do it. It's... I couldn't. And how long was this spell for, though? So, obviously, how long was it that you were doing that kind of... Was that three years or four? Um, how long was this for? I'd say from leaving Myasco to pack it in when I was 2017. So that was your routine for best part of what you said, 10 years or so? Yeah. Oh, my oh word. My and obviously goodness. events came up. Would, would you have yeah. rest days as well? You just wouldn't hit a golf ball or would that net like... Maybe just after an event. So you'd finish on a Sunday and you'd have a Monday as a rest day, maybe. But, but then you yeah. go to another event. Yeah. And, but if, and if you're your back-to-back -back events... And your routine would be the same. It'd just be a different venue. Yeah. So the one thing that you've not covered there, which I think if you if you were to give advice now to a to an 18-year-old younger aspirational james robinson yeah would you change that model at all would you would you add anything um i would certainly change the way i practiced i would make it i'd, I'd, I'd split it up into sections more technique and then performance pack 
practice so actually trying to break a per- personal record or something like that where I was maybe a victim of just so say for instance example I've set up a mirror on putting and I've hold 400 puts after that it should be a test of that new skill that I've just learned mm-hmm. or practiced so I should be doing holing out I didn't do enough of that till maybe later years when I was a professional but back then if I do a bit more performance practice and create personal records maybe that would have improved me practicing even more practicing on the pressure yeah. feeling like you're actually a tangible result yeah, rather definitely. than just doing the reps yeah like repetition is good but like it's like it's like on the driving range. If you were just stood there aiming at one target, hitting seven iron, seven iron, seven iron, you don't actually play golf like that. You yeah. hit a driver, and then your next shot is a nine iron, mm. and then your next shot might be a chip, and then it's a putt. If I could go back, I would change my practice more like that. I've got two questions. Go on. If you were to go back again or give advice, would you tell that young James Robinson to go to sunnier climates? Would you advise him to go to America for that time frame? During the winter, definitely during the winter. I mean, I, I used to do that when I was maybe maybe the last year of being an amateur and then during like professional years. So that you could wrap it all the way around. Yeah, because if you don't do that, there's somebody else that is. is. Mm. So you're not getting any better than the guy in Spain or America is. The analogy that if you don't practice on some on Christmas Day, someone else is. Exactly. The other thing I wanted to ask, you've not mentioned much about kind of fitness, working out, routines, which I feel like if if we were to ask now somebody who's aspirational and getting on tour right now, I think that would be a big part of it right now. Like, they'd say your routine, but even before breakfast and before getting up, there'd be an hour and a half workout routine in there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I did, I did used to go to the gym a lot, certainly more when I was an amateur than a professional because as an amateur... I was always seemed to be at home a lot more where when you turn professional you're always in a hotel and a lot of hotels don't have gyms and it kind of deteriorated when I turned professional but as an amateur I did a lot of gym stuff um but if you don't do it like we've just said somebody else will be yeah but it you've got to be specific to yourself like only if it benefits you do it because don't just do it because Joe Bloggs down the road's doing it. You have to do it to make you better. Yeah. Because you're, you know, physically pretty like, without really doing a great deal, I'm like, you're pretty like athletic already. Yeah. Like you've got a pretty athletic build. And I suppose that's not for everybody. You know, no. a lot of people would need to get stronger or faster or improve the flexibility. Where I feel like if you moved into any level of sport, your kind of athletic build would have probably carried you quite a long way, potentially. Yeah, definitely. And just like we're saying, like, I mean, look at people like Jason Duffner. Yeah. Like, he's he's not athletically, like, good looking. Like, his body doesn't look amazing, but it's functional, isn't yeah, yeah. it? It works. It creates a, a consistent golf swing. And of at course. the end of the day, we're trying to create a consistent strike, mm. ball flight, and repetition. And, you have to do what's right for you don't just do it because you think you should do it like do it for better not just for the sake of it i I feel this could be a three-hour right so in terms of amateur have you got 